MSFS is a real anchor for me in terms of kind of my worldview and my values and, and, and my identity. I have a Brazilian born father, Polish born mother, was born in Mexico, grew up in France, lived in the States, married a Chinese woman, live in Singapore. Um, so I, you know, I in many ways have kind of embraced MSFS as kind of an identity, you know, and what it represents. My classmates from all over the world and they have experience, they, the faculty and staff challenges you to show your skills as a leader to learn and to be able to out of your, go out of your comfort zone to be able to engage people as a future leader. I chose MSFS because um, it presents all the ingredients for becoming a good um, future leader um, and excelling in my field. Um, it has a, a wealth of just people that come from all different uh, walks of life and experiences as well as a fabulous faculty and um, academic reputation so it was kind of a no-brainer. If you want to be a good leader one of the one of the essential elements that you should have is a sense of fairness and justice. I believe um, Georgetown being a Jesuit school puts element, ethical elements in its, in its education which are crucial you know to be a, a good leader. And when I think about the MSFS program in general I think its kind of mission is obviously to prepare good leaders um, in the field of foreign affairs. I think that uh, very important qualities in a good leader are self-awareness and comfort with ambiguity and, and complexity. And I think that's a, those are natural skills for an MSFS student to have. Actually, the speaker today uh, had a book that we had to talk about in the leadership uh, in the summer before we go to school. So it was very interesting to see her talk about the some of the components what make a good leader, how the good leader would act with other actors in the, in the civic society. And that's what's very interesting for me to hear her talk about women empowerment, women in leadership position, because in my opinion, this is a very important component for women to be leaders, especially in the Middle East now, as I come from. I, think, I see that as a challenge. I see that as an opportunity for women to be uh, part of the society, to be engaged, to be leadership in the future. So I saw that very important. We're privileged today to hear from a leading thinker and esteemed practitioner in the fields of political philosophy, leadership, and feminist theory, Dr. Nan Cohan. In her lecture today, we'll ask the question, who leads in a democracy? Leadership embodies a form of the Aristotelian principle of ruling and being ruled in turn. I think it was very valuable to especially hear from some women leaders to come here to the school and talk about their experience. So I guess what I would resist is the notion that the concept of leadership should be identified primarily with these big visible men, almost always, the ones you named were all men, who have all this power and all this visibility and all these accoutrements of, of, and trappings of power. Yeah, that's one way to think about leadership, but my argument is that's only one way and leadership is more diverse than that. There's something really beautiful about MSFS and, and the kind of wide exposure um, that, that it uh, provided me, right? And I think I'm a better person for it and I'm a better manager and leader for it. But I, mean, I feel like I owe a lot to MSFS.